What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to be discussing how and where you can play the Pixel Party trading card game. Let's get into it. Let's start with where you can play Pixel Parties. There's a link in the description down below to go to the Pixel Parties Discord server where you can discuss and play games with the community. We play the games on untap.in. A link to untap will be in the description as well. Go to untap and sign in to your account or make an account if you don't already have one. The sign in box is here and create an account. You'll click this link here and you can log in with Discord or create an account with your email address. After you've made your account and signed in, let's start with how to create a deck. When you go to create a deck, the first thing you'll want to do is hit the create deck button in the top right. From there, you'll want to type a name in for your deck. I'll be using the name tutorial for the purposes of this video and make sure that custom CTG is selected. When all that is done, hit the create deck button at the bottom. In the deck interface, you can either add cards manually by searching for them in the card text box, or you can paste in a deck you have copied. In the description down below, you will find the recommended starter deck list and the one I will be using for this tutorial. I'll be showing you how to paste the Pixel Party's tutorial deck into Untap. First thing you want to do is click the Paste Deck button. Your main deck will always have 60 cards, so up to 4 copies per card of anything that is not an ability card. You can have any number of any ability cards in your deck. We'll get more into ability cards when we get into gameplay. After pasting in your main deck, click the play tab on the left side of the text box and paste in your play cards. In Pixel Parties, you will always start with three different heroes, which each have two ability cards that are shown in the two boxes underneath the image. All nine cards will be placed in the play section on the deck builder. Let's look at Cool Rescuer Monia, for example. She starts with one copy each of Charm and Fighting because those are the abilities listed in the boxes under her card image. The goal of the game is to kill all three of your opponent's heroes before they kill yours, so your heroes are the most important cards in your entire deck. The final thing we will add is a potion deck. We will click the second deck tab on the left side of the text box and paste in the potion deck. The potion deck must contain 0 or 5 to 15 cards. We'll get more into the potion deck when we get into the gameplay. Once you have pasted all the cards into their respective sections, click the import cards button at the bottom. Double check the deck and make sure the cards and counts are correct. Once we have verified that, an optional step is to set your initial counters to zero. We will do that by hitting the three lines in the top right corner of the deck and going to deck options. While in there, we can set the primary and secondary counters to zero. Once you've made all your deck's changes, hit the save button in the top right of your deck. Now that we've made our deck, let's start up a game. First thing you'll want to do when starting a new game is hit the new game button. While in the new game menu, we will title our game whatever we like. A great title is one that says the game's name and the opponent you'll be facing. We're playing solo, so there is no need for an opponent's name. We'll title this game tutorial as well. You also have many options at the bottom you can adjust to your liking. When you're done making any changes, hit the start game button at the bottom of the box. A new box will appear showing that we have created the game. Hit the enter game button to join the match. Once in the match, you will see all of your decks that you can use. Select the starter deck we just made and you'll see the three heroes and six abilities we've put in our play section be put on the battlefield. We'll align the cards to match the guidelines shown on the screen now. Your hero cards will go into slot number 1 and their respective abilities will go into slot number 2 under each hero. So let me just align those really quickly here. We'll put Bartis, we'll put Ida, and we'll put Semi out. Ida has a level 2 destruction magic, so we'll give her two copies of destruction magic here. Bartis starts with fighting and adventurousness, so we will give him adventurous. Oh, wait. Fighting and Destruction Magic. So we'll give him one copy of Fighting and one copy of Destruction Magic. And we'll do a, the two Adventurousness on Semi. Each hero gets three ability zones to use. Multiple copies of the same ability attached to a single hero will be stacked on top of one another and only take up one ability zone. Doing this is called leveling up that ability. For example, Treasure Hunter Semi starts with two copies of Adventurousness, so we'll stack the two copies on top of one another. Once the playfield has been set up, the players will flip a coin and the winner will decide who goes first. Once you have decided the turn order, draw an opening hand of five cards. To draw your opening hand, you will need to left click on the deck and use the arrows next to the draw button and change it to five. Then click the draw button and you'll draw the five cards from your deck. Now that the board is set up and ready to play, let's play through a turn. 
Before we get into the turn cycle, let's discuss some key concepts and ideas in the game. Let's start with gold. Gold is the main currency of this game and is represented as the black counter. While hovering over the counter, you can increase the counter with a left click or decrease it with a right click. Gold is used to pay for certain cards and effects and is the general cost for artifact cards, the gold cards. Another key idea we will need to understand are actions. The idea of an action is that you can use only one per turn and using one moves you to the action phase, something we will get into more when we discuss the turn cycle. An action is most commonly used by performing a spell or attack, the red cards. Some effects of cards will require you to spend your action to activate them, but using spells and attacks is the most common way to use an action. If a card says it is an additional action in this card text, it will not use up your action and is free to activate instead. Think of an action as another currency. You get one per turn and it resets every turn. Actions are extremely limited and should be used sparingly. Let's start with the turn cycle. Every turn starts with the start phase and all effects that stay at the start of the turn or until the beginning of the turn will resolve or expire. Once all the effects of the cards activated or expired in the start phase have resolved, we will enter the resource phase. In the resource phase, you will draw one card and gain four gold. My hero, Treasure Hunter Semi, has an effect to gain me six additional gold during the resource phase, so I will gain 10 gold per turn instead of the usual four. I like to shake cards when I use or activate their effects. I can do this by hovering over the card and pressing the H key. This is optional, but it's a nice way to show your opponent what you are doing. I will shake my treasure hunter semi to show that I am activating its effect to gain an additional six gold. Once all effects that trigger in the resource phase are resolved, we will move to the first power up phase. In the first power-up phase, you are able to attach up to one ability, the blue cards, to each hero. Play any number of artifacts assuming you can pay the gold cost. Play any potions, the brown cards, from your hand. Activate the ability of any card you control. And use attacks or spells that state in the card text that they count as an additional action. Our opening hand is Alchemy, Cloud Pillow, Victory Phoenix Cannon, Treasure Chest, Phoenix Tackle, and our draw for turn is Divine Punishment. You can attach at most one ability to each hero you control per turn, and each hero can have up to three different abilities and attach them at a time. Abilities have three boxes, which designate their level 1, 2, and 3 abilities according to the number of copies attached to the same hero. We have not attached an ability to Semi this turn, and Semi has an open ability slot, so we will start our turn by attaching Al Alchemy to our Semi. Alchemy is a very interesting card, as it's one of very few cards in the game that can access your potion deck. Coming back to where we left off when we were making the deck, the potion deck is an optional deck that contains either 0 or 5 to 15 potion cards. You can play any number of potion cards per turn, and when a potion card is played, it is immediately deleted and sent to your expel pile and untapped. Potions are not very accessible cards, and for that reason they generally have very powerful effects. To access the potion deck with alchemy, we will shake it to declare the effect and remove 8 gold from our gold supply since that's the level 1 ability of our alchemy. Once we have paid the 8 gold cost, there we go, we will draw a card from our potion deck. We drew a magnetic potion from the top of our potion deck. This card allows us to search our deck for any card and add it to our hand. Let's use Magnetic Potion to search our deck for a third copy of Destruction Magic to attach to Ida so we can use our level 3 Victory Phoenix Tackle. To search your deck, we will click on our deck and click the Find Card button. This will show all of the cards in our deck at the bottom of the screen in alphabetical order. Once we find the card we are looking for, we will drag it from the list at the bottom to the playing field. This will show the opponent what we are adding to our hand and will allow us to easily drag it into our hand. Once we have added it to our hand, we will click the X in the top left corner of the list and close the deck. If we have searched the deck, we will need to shuffle it. To shuffle the deck, we will need to click the deck and click the shuffle option. With this destruction magic now in our hands, we will level up Ida's destruction magic so we can use the level 3 ability allowing us to play level 3 destruction spells with Ida. There are 5 spell types each with their own ability to use them and 1 attack type with its own ability to use it. The icons for all spells and attacks along with their names are on screen now. The spells icon will appear in the bottom left corner of the image on the card. The level of the card is denoted by a number ranging from 0 to 9, and the level appears in the bottom right corner of the image of the card. 
we will also see the icon for reactions shown on screen now. This is a common secondary type that makes a red card not take an action, but usually requires the opponent to use a card or effect beforehand. Having a level 3 destruction magic hero means we can perform our phoenix combo, which requires you to have a victory phoenix cannon and phoenix tackle. We also have cloud pillow, which will reduce all of our self damage by half, and we take a lot of self damage with this phoenix combo, but we are 2 gold short of playing it, so we'll play treasure chest first. Treasure chest is an artifact. The amount of gold you need to pay is shown in the box at the bottom of the card. Treasure chest costs 0 gold and gains us 10 gold by its effect. We can either left click on our gold counter 10 times or we can hold shift and left click at once to gain in intervals of 10. This is a neat trick and helps a lot when you gain gold in large intervals. Now that we have 12 gold, we will have enough gold to play our cloud pillow. We'll pay 4 gold and target our Ida. Now Ida will take half damage from all damage sources and our Phoenix combo is online and ready to play. Once we perform an action, we will enter the action phase. The action phase is very short and only consists of resolving the card we played to enter the phase along with any effects that trigger based on the card we activated. We will play our Victory Phoenix Cannon with Ida to enter the action phase. Note that normally the player going first is not allowed to interact with the opponent at all during their first turn. This includes dealing damage, discarding cards from their hand or deck, or even making them draw cards. For this tutorial, we will act like we are going second to avoid this constraint. Victory Phoenix Cannon will take our action and deal 200 damage to a target your opponent controls. We can also activate its second effect and deal 200 damage to our Ida, but, but because of Cloud Pillow we played earlier, our Ida will only take 100 damage to use a level 1 destruction magic spell as an additional action. We will choose to play our Phoenix Tackle as an additional action. Phoenix Tackle says it deals 100 slash 200 slash 300, meaning it deals 100 if we had level 1 destruction magic, 200 if we had level 2 destruction magic, and 300 if we had level 3 destruction magic. So we will deal an additional 300 damage to our opponent's target and 150 more to our Ida but that is also half to 75 damage because of our Cloud Pillow. This combo deals a whopping 500 total damage to a target our opponent controls and kills 95% of all heroes in the game. After all cards and effects played during the action phase have resolved, we will enter the second power-up phase. Note, when you do kill a hero, that hero will go face down. An easy way to do this is to click on the hero and click the face down option. This will denote a hero is dead and will help to keep track of who and what is alive. Also, when a hero is dealt damage, we like to add notes to the hero to show how much health it has remaining. You can do this by clicking on the card and clicking the add note option. This will pull up a text box where you can insert some any text phrase. For this, our Ida was dealt a total of 175 damage. It Ida had 400 health initially, so Ida has 225 health remaining, so we will put in 225 and hit enter. This will help us keep track of how much health each hero has. During the second power phase, we can do all the same things as the first power phase. After we have performed all the actions we will like to in the second power phase, we'll move to the end phase. In the end phase, our turn ends, and all effects that state at the end of the turn, or until the end of the turn, will resolve or expire. Once all the effects of the cards activated or terminated in the end phase have resolved, our opponent will begin their start phase. This cycle of phases will continue throughout both players' turns. We cannot go backwards in this phase progression, so we need to make sure we do everything we want to in each phase before moving to the next. And that's how you play pixel parties. If you have any questions or concerns about something I maybe didn't cover too well in this tutorial or maybe didn't cover at all, then let me know in the comment section down below or you can ping me or DM me in the Discord server. With that being said, I hope you all have a great day.